The media likes to make immigration a racially divisive topic, so we never get to talk about it honestly. But we're going to do that today using clips of Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders. Let me play this clip of Laura Ingram really grilling President Trump and disagreeing with him, since Trump is a big believer in H-1B visas, and Laura Ingram thinks it hurts American workers. You've done a lot. Uh, on the economy today, we found out that, you know, still added 146,000 jobs. Uh, unemployment historically low at 3.5%. But we do have a little bit of a stall out on wage growth, which you ran on. And we've some, seen some, 2.9% last year, 0.1% yeah, I know, but... over last month. But we don't have a tight labor market. If we had a tight labor market, we'd be seeing real increases in wages. Yeah. I hear that your team is planning on advocating more foreign workers coming in for some of these high-tech companies. So I'm very concerned about that, I as know, are a lot of your concerned. supporters. And so is uh, Mark Levin a little bit. Yeah, and, we're concerned and because so is Americans, the great Lou Dobbs. you ran on America no, no, Lou first. Dobbs is concerned, too. But I'll say, Lou, here's the problem. I'm demanding that Japan and all these companies, the countries that have these massive, we have tr trade deficits like nobody's ever seen before. I say, you got to open up. I call Prime Minister Abe, he's a friend of mine, I say, Shinzo, you got to open up more plants in the United States. And they tell me, we want to do it, we want to do it. They start opening. They can't get labor. We need help. Otherwise, we could just say, don't if open up. If they couldn't get plants. labor, wages would be going up. Uh, wages, wages aren't are going, going up. Not, not in the high tech industry. Right, We're look, seeing a plateauing look, of wages. They went at 3% and it went up 2.9%. In the last two years, wages have gone up more than they have in 25 years. But for Google, why reward Google? Google's working against uh, no, you. No, in no, this I don't campaign. want to reward Google. Those I'm not, guys I'm will, not a fan. All they I'm want is low skilled workers. Well, I'm Mr. not President. a fan of Google, low but I'm paid a fan workers. of great companies, okay? You didn't run on bringing more foreign workers into the United so far, States. workers, we have to allow smart people to stay in our country. You graduate number one in your class at Harvard. You graduate yeah, from the Wharton School of Finance. Of no, it's want. not. It's yeah, a lot. It but yeah. you ran on people training their foreign replacements. That You ran against that. You, you, uh, Americans, it's humiliating for an American worker work for a company for 30 years. Now it's told, you got to train your, your foreign replacement who's going right. to live in Korea and you're going to pay him 20%. No, no, that's different. That's, I, I would never do that. But we do need workers in our country. And I do want an immigration policy. Nobody's been better on immigration than me. By the way, we won the funding for the wall, and the wall's been built anyway, because I was taking it out of the military, everything else. And now it's easier. We need people. I got Foxconn to go into Wisconsin. They have to get people. They, they spent a fortune. They built the most incredible plant I've ever seen. In Wisconsin, Foxconn, they so make all the apples. why should we have American stuff. graduates of colleges and universities we do. taking no, we those do. jobs? We do. But we don't have enough of them. We're not, we don't have enough of them. And we have to be competitive with the rest of the world, too. The companies want to hire these people, and well, they, they want can't. to hire people they can hire for the cheapest amount because that, I'm not that's talking what about they cheap. Want. I'm talking about brain power. No. They want to hire smart people, and those people are thrown out of the country. No. We can't do that. Well, you ran on America first. I'm going to anyway. No, I'm no, gonna this keep, is America first. All right, I'm going to keep pressuring me, you I just have this. to finish this. Yeah. If we tell smart people to get the hell out. Well, that's, that's not, that's not what we're first. saying. That's it a bad ends, thing. There's, there's a never-ending appetite on the part of corporate America to bring in as much cheap labor as possible to drive down Laura, wages. I have that's so many Now, a lot of people who lean left might say, oh my goodness, Laura is racist. She's all concerned about race. She doesn't care about American workers. She just doesn't like people of certain races. You might be shocked to find out that old Bernie Sanders actually used to agree with Laura Ingram. If you don't believe me, you could listen to Bernie Sanders in his own words. Else, and that gets us to the immigration issue. If poverty is increasing and if wages are going down, I don't know why we need millions of people to be coming into this country as guest workers who will work for lower wages than American workers and drive wages down even lower than they are right now. And as we know, the principal industries uh, which hire the bulk of illegal aliens, that is uh, construction, landscaping, uh, they, Look, I just heard something. Those are all industries in which wages are declining. I right. don't hear that discussed on the Senate well, floor you, by the proponents no. of this amnesty legislation. That's right. They have no good response. I just read something today that a lot of people coming into this country are coming in as lifeguards. I guess we can't find. <laughs> that's right. We can't find American workers to work as lifeguards. And the H. H-1B program right. has teachers, elementary school teachers. Right. Well, you know. Yeah, and that H-1B program, uh, we got to watch uh, 
uh, Senator Ted Kennedy sat there with the sole witness uh, being one Bill Gates, the world's richest man, telling him he wanted unlimited H-1B visas, uh, obviously uninformed as to the fact that uh, uh, seven out of ten visas under the H-1B program go to Indian corporations that are outsourcing those positions to American corporations in this country, and that four out of five of those jobs that are supposed to be high-skilled jobs are actually category one jobs, That's right. which is low skill. Well, you raise a good point, and that this whole immigration guest worker concept is the other side of the trade issue. On one hand, you have large multinationals trying to shut down plants in America, move to China, and on the other hand, you have the service industry bringing in low-wage workers from abroad. The result is the same. Middle class gets shrunken and wages go down. Senator Bernie Sanders, we thank you for being with us as always. My pleasure. But this is the crazy part. Bernie Sanders in the modern era says Trump is a racist, sexist, xenophobe. He's the most dangerous president ever. People like Bernie Sanders nowadays is a huge roadblock trying to have a conversation about H-1B visas, which he used to believe in because he used to actually stand up for American workers and he didn't bow down to political correctness in the Democratic Party establishment. So I wanted to hear what you had to say and how authentic you really are. And by the way, nobody believes for a minute that you told Elizabeth Warren that a woman can't run, make it for president. <laughs> um, so you've been very consistent and authentic. And since I've been 18, I voted half in every presidential election and half I voted Republican and half I voted Democrat. So I'm very interested in what you're doing for the poor. That's where I want to know. For the what? For the poor. I'm, poor. I'm interested in what so one issue that you have not been consistent on is uh, open borders. When you first ran, you said it was a Koch brothers scheme and seemed to recognize that low-wage workers being dumped on, into the country does not help low-wage workers. I'm, my family's 134% of the poverty level. So I worked at a restaurant in New Hampshire this summer, and the dishwashers were starting at $14 an hour teenagers. Um, how can you please explain why you changed on that issue? Did you have to change because oh, donors oh, okay. seem to want the low wage workers? No, 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 no. Okay. First thought. Um, what we, what I believe in, absolutely, is I don't believe in open borders. If open borders I mean anybody can come from any place in the world, there's no country in the history of the world I think that has ever had that view. That is not my view. But my view is that we have 11 million undocumented here. Many of those workers, by the way, are being exploited right now. You know, Trump wants to throw everybody out of the country. If he threw out people out of the country, the price of food in this country would skyrocket. Who do you think is picking the crops and planting all over this country? Okay. So what we need to do, and I think what the American people want us to do, is rather than demonize the undocumented, what they want is a sensible immigration policy, which includes the following. Right now, you got 1.8 million young people in this country who came to this country at the age of two, three, five. Trump took away their legal status. As president, I would restore the legal protection for the 1.8 million in the DACA program. Number two, number two. In my view, what the United States of America is not about is having federal agents seize little babies from the arms of their mothers. That's not what this country is about. And we're going to end that. Nor is it throwing children. So we need to hire hundreds of administrative judges at the border so that we could deal with asylum issues in a rational and expeditious way. And thirdly, as I mentioned, we need to move toward comprehensive immigration reform and a path toward citizenship. Okay, uh, maybe a This H-1B work visa situation really highlights the problem with both sides of politics. When it comes to the left wing, everything's so politically correct. Everything is so racially driven. Everything is about sexism. Everything is xenophobic. We can't talk about illegal immigration. Now enforcing the law is racism and standing up for Americans is it. Everything is. It's like, give me a break. So I would think that modern 2020 Bernie Sanders would probably think old Bernie Sanders was racist for not just being like a robot and just saying, 
saying all oh, legal legal immigration work it's all perfect it's all great it's like dude we know it has an effect on the economy and there has to be some sort of system that works at bare minimum we need to be able to debate about it so clearly that's a problem on the left it's just like getting out of control and a problem on the right wing is you'll see that donald trump is actually further left wing when it comes to h1b visas so as the left spirals out of control the right wing always tries to please the left or play their games to the point where that's why a lot of conservatives are like hey can we just hold our ground for once because it seems like even when we're in power and control we don't get anything done or or we just shift and try to appease them. But at bare minimum, there needs to be a debate and a conversation about it without just saying the word racism. It makes talking about anything, including work visas, which Bernie used to rail against, it makes it impossible to have any conversation about it, and it's a real problem. And when it comes to the economy and American workers, Laura Ingram really nailed it. It's a good thing when unemployment's low and there's more corporations looking for work than there are workers. That's what drives wages up. When you just keep green lighting in temporary work visas that these corporations know they could get for cheaper because the people have no option. It's like, this is the only way I'm gonna get to the United States. Wages aren't gonna go up as highly, just like Laura said to Trump. That's basic economics. You want there to be a demand for workers. And like I said, Bernie Sanders used to even know that. But even trying to have a conversation about that today on the left wing or on the right wing in some cases, is like a closed door, closed wall. And this is why political correctness is the worst. Like George Carlin tried to tell everybody, it's just fascism with manners. It's trying to pretend that you're virtuous and just when you're doing the exact wrong thing and you're intolerant to any sort of criticism or conversation around why what you're doing might actually not be as good as what you claim it is. So that's the point I wanted to get across is, I would love to see that old Bernie Sanders come out and talk to the left wing like he used to, but since he can't even post a video of Joe Rogan without getting yelled at, I'm sure he'll back up just like he did in 2016 and bend over to whatever the Democratic Party media and social justice mob demands of him. And when it comes to the right wing, I'm glad to see people like Laura Ingram, Tucker Carlson, myself and others really try to challenge the Republican Party and even President Trump. So that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think about the immigration system, H-1B visas, political correctness. Have a great day. I'll be back with more videos.